Welcome to the last part of your series where I built an app with the iTunes Search API. And I'm basically cloning the native iOS app that uses this API or one of the apps that uses it, which is the iTunes Store app that you can see on the right, because this is a screen recording for my iPhone. And today we are going to have a very interesting case because we're integrating one of these navigation links. And in this case, I need to, when this view appears, I need to fetch again data, but even more than we saw in this previous example. And I also need to scroll programmatically when this view appears. Let me just show you. So if I'm searching for something, what I previously did was adding navigation links to the album. And you see, I'm pushing here the detail and I need to fetch more because we actually were fetching the list of all the songs. And now this is going to get another level because we need to also include navigation links to the song detail view. So I tap on one of these songs and you see it brings me to the detail view of this and it's actually the same styling as the album view. And in this case, for this view, the only information we have is the song which means that I also need to show the album details. So we need to fetch the album and I also need to fetch the list of all the songs. So this is what we did before. Now, in this case, the song that I selected here for this detail is actually blued out, so it's highlighted. And maybe I show a different example. It was actually scrolled to. So here you see the track, this is track number nine. And when it appears, we see it directly further down in the list. So I can go up again. This is quite an advanced view that we have to work with because of the complexity. But it's an interesting case for when to start a network request, when to get the data, and when to do this programmatically scrolling. We're not going to build so much UI because I basically need to extend what we already have. Okay, then let's have a look what I actually did so far. <laughs> Okay, on the very top level of the SwiftUI app, I have the content view with this tab bar. And the uh, one that I'm interested in is the search tab, which is in the search view. Here I did create the view models or I created in instances of these view models that actually do my fetch requests. And I actually only added these links in the album list view. So this is here. Where I have this for each of all these albums and I create this list entry with a navigation link to the album detail view. So I can tap on this and see the detail. <laughs> so we're going to use something very similar for our songs and I'm trying to reuse some of the album detail view information where we need to compose, compose this a little bit better. Okay, let's start by just creating a, a song detail view. This is with your view, song detail view. This obviously needs the argument of the song. This is a song. And the preview, I am going to use the songs, the example function. And for now, I'm just going to show the song's track name. So we can check our, if our links are proper. So one link that I want to add is in the song list view. So this is one of these tabs. So this would be adding the link in this song list. So I have to um, use the song raw view with a navigation link, destination and label. So this is the song raw view as the label. And the link is my song detail view with this song. Let's just, this is one position where I want to use this. And the other is in this all for one of the cells. So this is in the song section view. Just going to take this in the song section view here for my song raw view for in this in this grid I just need to do this a little bit differently okay let's try so the problem is this links i need to because these are links and they're just grayed out if i'm not using navigation view let me try again now one thing that happens is actually changing the styling of the cells and that's why my text is here blue. If you don't want to have this, we need to use button styles of plain. So also in the other case, in the song list view. 
So now this is the styling as before. I can tap on this cell and it's bringing me to the detail where I only show the title right now. So this was the one link that I added and the other was in the songs tab. And again, these things work. This is also true if you hear in the all, under C all, we get these links and then we get another link. Okay, so the links is working and we can decide what to do with our song detail view. This is very similar to the album detail view. And just go here and check what I have. So we have the header where I have an album and then down here, which is doesn't do properly in the preview, I'm fetching the other songs of these albums. So I need to do these two fetches. One of them already took care of with this song for album list view model. And I'm going to copy all these in my song detail view. So the initializer is, in this case, we start with a song. This is the init for the uh, song detail view with the songs. Okay, actually I don't probably need this in print statement. So I set my song here and the album ID that I need to fetch the album, uh, the songs for this album is in the song. Each of the songs also has this. This is the collection ID. So now down here, I can also show this list. Let's just check. This is the songs for album list view. And I also need to start this fetch. So this parts I definitely need to do. So in my main part, I have a V stack. Oh, this is too many. I show all the songs, the list of all the songs. And in the on appear, I'm also fetching the songs. So this should be now the same part that I already had for the album detail view. So tapping now on one of my songs will bring me to the song detail and I see this list that I fetched. So now I need to have the header for which I need the album. So I need to have another view model to fetch this, which means that in my view model folder, I'm going to create a view model that is called, um, this is a Swift file because it's a view model. This is album for song view model create so we now need to create this class this view model this is an observable object okay the one thing that i want <laughs> is the album because i use this in my ui this has to be a, a add published for album of type album and in the beginning because I need to fetch this I don't have anything so I make this optional and start with nil in order to fetch this I actually need to have the album id and I need to actually create a function that fetches this so this is func fetch song song so I'm using I'm fetching this with this song information and the thing that I actually need is the album id which is the song collection ID. So this is what we already used for fetching all the other songs. Now I had this on my network request and creating these queries. I started to do in the service class. So this is this API service that maybe we have to first check what I have in there and adjust this. So I have a generic function that executes here my URL request. And I have this, and I have this function parts that where I can give all the convenience input parameters. For example, fetching albums from a search term, fetching an album, fetching songs for an album ID. And this is very close because what I want to have is a function that fetches album for album ID. This is an int, and it's very similar. I have to have here a completion handler. Only that in this case, I'm not returning here songs. I'm going to return an album result. Okay, the URL, I can use this helper function create for album ID and type in this, in the other one here, I was looking for songs types. And in this case, I'm using for album types. So this is here using this function. 
with the lookup endpoint. So I'm adding here this ID with the album ID or the collection ID and the entity I'm exchanging here for this type. In one case, I'm looking for songs with this ID, collection ID, and the other one for albums. In this case, because there should actually be only al one album, we should, with this collection ID, I should actually only get one back. But it's going to return an array, so we're just leaving it like this. And now I can execute my fetch with this generic function. So the type that I'm returning here is the same as this album results. So this is album results dot self with the URL that I just created. And then the completion I'm just passing further up. Okay, now we have this function that should give us the album with this ID. And I can go back to my album for song view model. So I'm using this function, which I access from the service, fetch album for album ID, result in. Okay, because this is again something that can fail. And I just need to keep my failures, uh, errors, if I'm still loading around. This is the same as I had here with this fetch state. So I'm just going to have the same property which in the beginning is good. Before I start my fetch, I'm setting this state to loading. And now when I return here, actually this is closure, so this is weak. So if, and when I return here, I need to go back to the main queue. Dispatch queue.main.async. Now I can use this for result. And this is like an enum with a success or failure. So switch result case of failure. So I have an error. For example, if my I don't have network connection, I'm going to say self dot state is an error. And I use the errors localized description to show on the UI for debugging. I mean, I could use your log files, but just for us for now, I use a print statement mm -hmm. where I just show the error. Maybe I should have a little bit more because I have all these errors in different view models for different fetches and maybe just want to keep track of where I had a problem. So this is error when fetching album with ID. Okay, then the next case is success. So this is results. And now I can say my album should be actually in this results. And it actually should be, this is this results array that I generated. And it's it should be only one and the first one should be the results. I can also add a print statement just for now. I mean, we can also probably set an error when I don't have anything which shouldn't happen too often. Okay, this is um, successfully fetched album with ID, or can say a fetched album for song. And then we just say song dot track name. This is, I mean, this print statement is just for me, so I know I actually did something. Okay, mm, looks good. So we have now a way of fetching something. And I can use this view model in my detail. Okay, this is a second state object at, because this needs to be persistent during the lifetime of this view. Album view model. This is the album for song view model. Actually, I can initialize this because it doesn't have any input arguments. And then in the on up here, I say fetch all the songs and I can say my album view model fetch for this song. Now that I should have this data, which we can test by running. I did add the print statements. Just going to delete. When I now tap on the song, we should see two fetches, one for this list of songs and one for the album. Okay, and it's telling me fetched 17 songs and successfully fetched album for song cry to me. Okay, it looks like we have some information and now I can, I want to have this header area, which is the same as 
for I didn't add the links everywhere, which is the same as for the album detail view. So you just need to have this area in the album detail view. So this is this whole stuff. I want to separate this in an extra view. So I am going to extract this as a sub view. Extract sub view. So the name of this is album header detail view. And the information that it wants to show is for the album. So that's why I have this error because it says I am expecting to have an album property. And it, it's looking for the format date function. So this I'm going to also move now in the sub view because I'm only needing it there to get with the header. And maybe I'm going to move the preview at the last position. Okay, mm -hmm. now I can actually use this here in my album detail view. This is the album header detail view for this album. Okay, this is the same thing that I'm going to need in my song detail view. So again, here I'm showing this detail, this header, and the album that I need for this, that it wants to show for, is now in my album view model, the album. And you already see one problem. Um, <laughs> the album in this view model is optional because we need to initially just fetch this. And I'm going to, um, because in the other case, I already had the album. I didn't, for the album detail, I knew I had the album. So I first should check if I have the album, if let album is album view models album, then I can show this header with just the album. And else I am going to show here a loading indicator. So this is a progress view and the styling is a circular. So this is loading spinner. We could also improve this by having here some nicer animation for the loading, maybe using some placeholders with the reducted. But I'm going to just make it simple in this case. And we try again. Okay, so searching for something. And we are successful. You saw there is the header. Should try again. So it was not there initially. You saw there was a little bit of a delay when appearing. But I'm doing I'm fetching everything now. Which is nice. The only thing is the top part does look like it's I want to have some kind of divider or separator or something. So I'm just going to add here a little bit of a shadow. And this is anyway for the de header detail. So here I want to add a shadow and this is just at the, I mean, not to everything, just so it looks like the header is higher than the lower part. So I actually need to add a background with a color and I'm using one of the system background colors. So open parenthesis uh, dot system background. And I can add to this one a shadow with a radius of five. Now I have the radio, the shadow below, but not on the top. And I basically just want to extend the background on the um, top part in the safe area. So I'm adding to this color a edges ignore safe area dot top. It's going to maybe uh, format this. So you see that if you add a color, I just ignore the safe area then the shadow. Okay, I guess this is enough just to get impression. I don't have a list, so let's just try this in the app because I need to fetch some songs. So now I can scroll and it looks like I'm my songs go under my album, which is a nice effect. Okay, I am quite okay with the UI. What I want to do now, I mean, this is one of the interesting parts, is actually doing this because now it pretty much looks like the album view, but we want to um, highlight the song that was selected. So this needs to be blue and we need to scroll there. So let's think of where I should actually do this. Mm, going back to my song detail view. 
So the part where the song this is, where I want to highlight this, is in the songs for album list view. Songs for album list view. So here I have this grid where I show all of these elements with the for each. And here to the um, raw with the selected song, with the song for this detail, I want to make this blue. So first of all, if I want to do this here, I definitely need to have the information for this. So it needs to know what the selected song is. So I'm adding as a second argument the selected song of type song. Now I did use this both for the album and the song detail view. <laughs> and in one case I don't have a song, in the other one I don't have it. So I'm making this optional. Now because I added this it's going to complain in a couple of places. So here for my previous I don't have anything selected. This is nil. And then here in my song detail view, I do have a song, That's the whole. that was the whole point. And this is the song of this song detail. And it should complain also in the song, in the album detail view. So in this case, this is the song selected song is nil. Okay, now in the part that I actually added this selected song now to, we can think of where I want to change the UI. And this is for, I have here the list of all my songs. I generate a row for each of them. And I want to change, make this foreground color blue if it's selected. So I'm going to add here a foreground color modifier and say if this song for this row is equal to the selected song, then I'm using here color dot accent. And otherwise I'm just using one of the system colors for label. And now it's complaining because uh, my song is not equatable. This is a protocol that you need in order to be allowed to use equal equal. So I go in my models to my song and add this protocol conformance equatable. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's directly because I have here an ID and all kinds of stuff and the normal types, it is ident um, equatable. Okay, let's just see if I go to one of the songs and you see when I do this link, this raw that I selected is actually blue. So we have this part. The next thing that I need to do when I have here the selected song is actually scroll to the right position. For example, in this case, the selected cell is down there. I actually want to scroll this higher so it's more visible. Or if it's not even, if it's further down, like in this case, it's down here so I wouldn't even notice this. So we need to do some programmatically scrolling. Okay, we have to go to the view where I have the list, which is my songs for album list view. In order to scroll, I need to embed the scroll view in a scroll view reader. So this is a scroll view reader. And you get the scroll view proxy, which has a function scroll too. So this needs to be wrapping the scroll view. When you call scroll to, you need to know the ID of the view I want you want to scroll do to. You can either get the ID of the view or you can set the IDs. So in my raw, because this is what I where I want to attach this to, I can add a ID modifier and saying, yeah, just use the song track ID track number as the identifier. Okay, and now the question is, I do have the proxy, I have the ID, and when do I call the scroll to function? And I'm going to use the, this is supposed to be scrolling when this view appears. So when I have the scroll view, I'm going to use the on appear. This is inside of the scroll view reader. So I have the proxy and I can say scroll to, and the ID is my selected songs track number. And you also have the possibility to have here an anchor and you can say, do I want to, how far you want to scroll? So maybe you want to have the, this cell in the middle of your whole, of your 
visible part. Okay, now let's try. I should have just remembered something. And there's actually another problem because, okay, one at a time, you see here actually the list is in the wrong order. <laughs> So I was assuming they would give me back the tracks ordered, but apparently they didn't. Um, so just quickly, when I fetch the songs for this album, the result here in after this fetch, the songs I need to order, so I need to sort by because I didn't make them comparable. Um, so this is shorthand side dollar zero. This is the first one's track number should be smaller. Then the other elements, track number. Okay, I need to try again. I probably should now. Well, this is a little bit diffi more difficult to test. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is. Uh, I do. I do not remember. It was this one, and now this is nicely sorted. So I did fix this, but um, I'm actually not, as you see, we are not really scrolling, especially here. It's down there and I didn't scroll. Why did I not scroll? Let's go back. Mm. And in order to see this a little bit better, I am going to extract this view <laughs> because now it's a little bit difficult. I have so much stuff. So I'm going to... Mm -hmm. Right here, sub view. This is more for me to remember. Struct, this is my song grid view. This is a view. This is a, this needs to have a body. So I'm going to just put all this grid stuff in there, which means what it needs is these songs. So this is the songs. This is an array of song and the selected song. This is an optional song. So now I'm iterating here for the songs array and it needs to have this formatted function. So I'm moving the situation thing in here. And now in this where I remove this, I can say song grid view with the song view models songs and the selected song. The important reason why I did this is because now it's shorter and I can see the two cases that we have. I have the case of initially I have to load this and I have the case that I actually have songs where I show this. Now where did I attach the on appear to, kind of on purpose to demonstrate this point, is to the scroll view. So when the scroll view appears, I am executing this on appear. And what is the case when the scroll view appears in these two cases is loading and having songs. We are probably not having songs. So it is in the, I'm trying to scroll when I'm still in the loading state. We can check this by printing here, scroll in list with, so this is the song view models songs dot count. So scroll in this with x number of songs. And my print statements start with, okay, maybe I should have made this bigger. Um, so the first one says songs in list, a scroll in list with zero songs, which means I don't have a list that I can scroll in and it doesn't find the, so this view doesn't exist, which has this view with the ID that I want to scroll to is kind of not going to work. Then it says we successfully fetched the album and we successfully have fetched the three songs, the five songs. Okay, how do I fix the problem of wanting to scroll at the wrong moment? I should scroll when I have data, which means I need to move this on a peer to a position where I know when this view is on a peer, then I should scroll. And that is the case of this song grid view, because if I am here in this case, I have songs. So I am cutting this and attaching it to the song grid view. Try again. 
c'est bon. Tapping on something that I hope I need to scroll to. So this is still not working <coughs> because I did set, this really depends how I set here my state. So I need to check actually if I have songs. So else if my songs view model songs dot count is bigger than zero. So now I only, I show this when I have songs, which is actually good. <laughs> only showing this list when I have something to show. So I uh, pick something and I tap. And just going to, I should have made this bigger. So now my print statements are the order of what things is. First, I get, where we, uh, first I received that I have fetched 12 songs. Then I, six, uh, then I see I fetched the album and then I see scroll in list with 11 songs. So finally I uh, properly scrolled, which you also see because finally the cell that I wanted is in this, is in here. And the reason why it's in the center is because I used this anchor point just to make sure it's in the center. Otherwise it would be just the same. Okay, so in case you were wondering why your scrolling doesn't work or certain things don't work, maybe you check if it's actually possible for SwiftUI to do it at the right moment that you think it should happen. Or if what you want to do is not already there, not yet there. Yeah, you know what I mean. So this is a good example for when you use on here, because that makes sure you know what's going on. You can, the alternative would be, where is the on? The, the other way, if you want to attach to the scroll view, is you can also say I am receiving here publishers. So for example, my songs, view models, songs, publisher. So this is now sending, this will now send this multiple times. So this is the songs. So if I, this is in the beginning zero. So I only should scroll if my songs count is larger than zero. Then I can also do the same here. Scroll. So maybe I just uncomment this so we see if I only scroll once. But in this case, it doesn't work because it apparently did not create this view at the right moment or the way I thought. So using on receive or properties changes or on song or on the on change might not work if you want to do certain things on UI. <laughs> so I'm just going to take this out and say, yeah, this is apparently the one solution that I found that is working with the on appear. So you see now the better example for on appear, which means I can actually I realized I wanted to improve something in my main part. So in the search, in the search view, this is the other view where I use this starting fetches when something is on appearing. So here, this is probably not the best way because in this case, it's more relying on the on change. So I, I mean, what I maybe I should show you the slight but I slightly dislike about this solution. So if you go in one of the song tabs and search for something, you go to the albums and it does this flickering. This is because it's on appearing and then it does something additionally. If I now change my search term, so now I am only updating this album list, then I go to songs, which has still the old ones. And then that's why you see them, then it loads. I can't find anything. Okay, I should have used something else. But then it's loading and then the new ones come. So you have this, you still shortly see the old ones, which I don't want. The other disadvantage of using this on appear here is it's a little bit of clutter. It doesn't look very clean. We can also, because the one that I want to actually react to is the search term, when the search term changes, or when I change the tab, which is the selected entity. So we can also add here an on change for the selected entity. And basically when either of this property changes, I want to go through and update whatever view model I need. So this is the stuff that I would need to do for when one of them changes. So I'm extracting this as a function. Func update search term, or actually update view models 
search term for search terms the string and type this is a entity type and then I'm just going to do this whole thing uh, so I can just cut this out so in this case um, oh, I should have renamed this to so this okay and this new value is actually the search term which means that I can call this function now from the on change for the search text this is the new value and the selected entity type that is the previous one actually and here I can update for the search term so this one isn't changed and this one is the new one now this is a lot cleaner and this means I can also get rid of my on appears here and this one now I have here one part that where I can see which views are there and then down here I see how with the data flow just going okay so now this only needs to just work so I go on the different tabs now I can change the search this is updated when I go to songs it still does this so what I actually want to do is here in this function I need to reset the search term in case I have some, I just want to erase the old values which is easy by setting these text to nil uh, to empty um, so this is setting this one this will set them to empty and erase the song array I clear the song array and clear the movie array ah oh, this is not so I'm basically always resetting the other two. I mean, what I do right now is just a little bit of extra. So I go to one of this to go to two of these tabs, and now go to songs, and you see there was no previous list because I erased this and only the indicator. If I change this now here again and go to the albums. You saw there was no prior old list. So using this kind of, in this case, it's probably a little bit cleaner to use the on change uh, because when I use the on appear, it's already, you will see the old data or the old values, the old state. And I just want to be a little bit ahead of the updates. Whereas if I use the detail views, I really only want to do certain actions when this view appears. That's the trigger moment. This is the trigger moment I want to use. Or in my, um, here when I have the song for this album list and the action that I want to do is on appearing of these views when I know I have the data that I want to scroll in. So then it's actually better to stick with the on appear. Last, just as a small, okay, I should really stop doing the small tweaks. The last thing I just want to improve is because right now I had to change my target to iOS 16 and actually I want to go back to 15 and the only, if you try this, the only one that's going to complain is here this grid view. You saw me earlier using the V stack with, with an H stack. So how do I, in this case, have two versions depending on which, well, two versions of this view depending on the iOS version. So to do this, I first need to create the old one. So after my song grid view, I am creating the um, version for song stack view because I'm using H stack and V stack. This is a view. And basically, maybe just going to copy all this and adjust. So it needs to have this formatted duration function. So I'm going to take this out of uh, this views and place it in the file. I don't want to expose it to whole, my whole project. So I'm making this file private. You can go ahead and add private properties, um, add private everywhere where it's necessary because I didn't do that properly. So now this is stopped complaining and my song stack view I can optimize. So this is a V stack with an H stack. And I cannot use this alignment stuff, uh, the grid things. 
it's still I still need to have the ID because I still need to be able to scroll to this position. Now I just need to remember the some of the layout stuff, like adding these fixed frames and the spacer. Now the space is already there. Okay, so now I have a version that I can show for the lower iOS than 16. So I can make this distinction here when I call the song grid view. So in order to check for the version, this is if hashtag available. For platform, I'm only looking at iOS um, 16 and higher. I can use the song grid view, like so. And else, I can use my song stack view for the song view models songs in my selected song. Now the next thing is complaining. I have here this one in, on a peer that I wanted to attach to an L if else. It doesn't like this. And in order to attach to, I want to attach this on a peer to both of my views. So I do add here group. This is actually the one reason to use a group if you have, I mean, the one of the reasons. If you want, if you have a view modifier and you want to attach to multiple views in a conditional, you use the group. Okay, now this seems to have done the trick. And I can go and change my mm, minimum deployment target here to 15. And now we can select a lower simulator for 15, iOS 15. This is failing because the system, the system still thinks this view needs to be compiled. So we have to add here an attribute, add available, and then it's the same iOS 16 and higher. So now the compiler basically ignores it if I want to run this for iOS 15. And it is happy again. Okay, let's try again. Okay, we are running and I can go to the detail. Okay, maybe I should work on my formatting <laughs> because I guess I have here, yeah, I guess this padding stuff uh, needs to be fixed. Okay, I can fix this by, in this case, in the stack view, it's basically just this padding. I just want to have padding at the trailing edge of my buy button. Well, you probably can try this yourself. The nice thing I have now here the sub view, so you can just add it to the. We can actually easier now because we have the sub views. Add this here to my preview, so you can add a song stack view for with this one example, and the selected is nil. So this is the first here. Actually, I have two examples, so I can act. So this is song.example2. And then though up here, you see there's another tab. This is the second view that I attached. And we see this preview and can decide if we are happy or not. OK, this looks a little bit better. So I guess I just leave it like this. <laughs> we finally reached the end of this tutorial. Thank you for still being with me. We reached a really nice stage of this application. If you're still motivated and you want to um, improve a little bit more because now we have so much data and you can build a little bit more if you want a bit more practice, you can just go ahead and look at the um, iTunes Store app. So for example, you can, for one of these lists, instead of here having a list, you can also use the lazy V grid, so you have this multiple cells there. I'll just try other layouts. You can also work on the detail of the movie section. So for example, you can try to rebuild this view. There is two prices actually in this case, one for buying and one for renting. They also provide these links to the preview URL so you can use a media player. Um, for showing this stuff in an overlay, if you're really motivated. <laughs> or just use one of the, use he, add here the long description of this movie with a collapsing part. 
and add here this tables uh, with the genre and runtimes and stuff. Just have a look at what you want to actually do. There's not everything, not everything that you see here. I think I used. We can also have a look at the other data types. Maybe they are more interesting, like like looking at the podcast data or the TV stuff. Or just have a look at, get a little bit of inspiration from the genre tab. Although the searching for genres, you need to use an attribute, uh, which I didn't talk about these queries. So you could basically search for different genres if you want to, and then show here different sections. And um, here, for example, some, some kind of scroll with comedies and then search for other stuff. You can keep on playing with the iTunes search API. If you want to share your results, you can put your stuff on a GitHub repository and then write a comment with your link to the GitHub so other people can see what you did and get inspired. Please like this video and share. It's a lot of work, so I really appreciate it if you can help me out. I'm probably going to make apps with different APIs. If you have a suggestion, you can also recommend me one. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss it. Until next time, happy coding.